Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans. But, you know, we, we'll love for that to happen, but we'll let it play out, man. What, what else we got on the agenda tonight, though, Trip? Oh man, we let, let, let's let's get let's get into a, a little bit of uh, a football. Um, actually, and I'm we're gonna add this into the rundown. There's actually a story that just dropped to uh, literally just dropped today. Um, with uh, Nasib from the uh, defensive end from the Raiders, who actually used his social media platform to to come out as being gay. He is the uh, only active, uh, open, heter uh, homosexual uh, player in the NFL right now. Um, he's actually in his peak years in the NFL as well. I know we had the, the Michael Sam situation a couple of years ago, but he he wasn't really in the league. We're talking about somebody who's been playing in the league for a few years now and is a really good football player in the NFL currently, which makes a huge difference. Um, as far as being able to stick around in the league now, like I really, I want to see, you know, how this this whole thing plays out. If if anything's gonna come, because it was it was really tough for Michael Stam to uh, to to stick around, and and he was somebody who ca who came out of the SEC and was a uh, defensive player of the year coming out of college in the SEC, but you know, but the the NFL wasn't ready for it at that time. I don't know if they're if they're completely ready for it right now. We're gonna kind of have to play a, a wait and see uh, approach, but, you know, shout out to that man for, 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 for telling his truth, living in his truth and not being afraid of that. Um, he had said he, he had been toying with the, with the decision to come out for, for some time now. So, you know what, shout out to him for, for speaking his truth. Yeah, absolutely. I, I applaud, I applaud his, his courage. Um, as you mentioned, he is a productive player on the field. He's not just some bench guy who like looking for attention. And he said to himself, he said, look, look I, you know, I'm not doing this for anything other than to live my truth and to help encourage others to live theirs as well. Uh, he also made a, a large donation towards suicide prevention for the LGBT community. So shout out to him, man. You know, like I said, it takes a lot of courage, um, but I'm sure this is some sort of discussion he had with not only his family, but with some of his teammates. And he probably felt like, look, the support is good. And why not now? Let me just, you know, live my truth and encourage others to do the same. Definitely, you know. What I mean, big shout out to him for coming out. I really don't even. I, don't, I, I normally don't talk about the topic of, of the, uh, the LTBQ or whatever, but uh, shout out to him. Uh, I let you know right now, the NFL is not ready for it, but they won't say it um, because there's so much controversy if you do go against it. But um, shout out to him. You feel what I'm saying? That's the life you want to live. That's the life you choose. <laughs> shout out to him. You know, what I mean, I prayerfully that. You know what I mean? He doesn't get penalized for living his life and living his truth and get to live and get to do what he loves to do. And that's play the game of football. And and that's the thing with this situation, again, because the, there's a huge difference between him being an established, uh, you know, certified starter in, in this league and already being a proven uh, player. Whereas with Michael Sam, he was just coming in. He never he he came out before he even stepped on the field for a, for a pro game. So if, if they're not ready for it, then and you in and, and something like that, like even his, his draft stock was hurt by that. Here we have a situation where this is a player who is already established in the NFL. Um, so it, it's going to be it's, it's going to be interesting to see um, what the NFL does, you know, moving forward, not the, the league as a whole, but just the, the, the players and everybody around the league. Obviously, you don't want that type of backlash like you like you mentioned. So nobody's going to gonna come out and be, or I would hope anyway, nobody's gonna come out and be like, nah, I'm not messing with that, whatever, you know, I, you would hope just because, you know, it's gonna be a whole lot of backlash. Some sponsors might back out, a whole bunch of things can come come along with that. So we gotta wait and see, cause I, I wanna see, you know, I would like to know what's the what's the locker room talk gonna be? What's the, the trash talk gonna be, uh, you know, on, on the field, it's a different thing we got we gotta see. But you know, again, we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes during the season. Again, we're still in the off season, so we still got got a little while before we even get back to, to football. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. The other thing is this uh, vaccination stuff in the NFL. Um, I, I personally, I was I was against vaccines at first, uh, or the, at least this particular one. But you know, 
having a couple of close calls, I just said, you know what, let me go ahead and do this thing. Um, but, you know, to each his own, you got a couple of football players, you know, one being uh, Cole Beasley, wide receiver from the Bills, who has kind of stuck to his stance in regards to the vaccine um, and, and, and whether or not he was going to take it. And then you got guys like uh, Travis Kelsey who are pushing for guys to take the vaccine. Um, and then on the flip side of that, you got stadiums that are not allowing fans into stadiums if they aren't vaccinated. I know that was one of the things with the Nets for the second round of the playoffs. They said you, you had to be vaccinated in order to go to one of those playoff games. So this, I mean, this, this, the issue ain't going away no, no time soon. Cause the, the, we're still dealing with the effects of the coronavirus. And of course, again, we literally just the other day had Chris Paul test positive for COVID. So this thing ain't going nowhere anytime soon. Um, but as, as far as the vaccination debate goes, you know, I mean, it's just, it's it, honestly just a personal choice whether or not you're going to get it. And what, the thing that sucks is it's not like if you take the vaccine, you are exempt from getting COVID again. You could still actually get COVID. You can still transfer COVID. So I can understand this thing from both sides of the coin. Definitely. You know what I mean? What you said to each his own, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, a, it's a lot. I just seen something today that talked about the immune system and talked about the vaccination and all that other stuff. And it's just a lot, man. Um, to each his own. Anybody that want to take it, God bless. If you don't, God bless. Um, I'm just a strong, my faith level is just a bit different. Um, I believe that uh, if God kept me this far, he ain't going to leave me now. So that's just me. Um, I do plan on, only reason why I'm considering taking it is because um, I'm planning on traveling. You know, my, me and my Mike Larry Entertainment brand, I have to travel a lot. So um, I was supposed to, I went to Israel before everything happened out there in Israel. Um, and one of the things that they was requiring with was with the COVID vaccine. And I was like, well, I'm not sure if I want to take it. So I was willing to lose out on that that opportunity. But, um, uh, you know, it's a lot. You feel what I'm saying? I'm still toiling and thinking about it. But, you know, to each his own, I hope, I hope if you do decide to take it, you understand it's something that you discuss with your family and not because you're scared. You can't live life scared anyway. You know what I mean? Don't be a Ben Simmons. You feel what I'm saying? Don't live life scared. <laughs> like, that's what I'm living on. <laughs> Don't live life scared. You feel what I'm saying? Take the shot, whether it's the vaccination shot or your shot and living life without it. So take your shot. You know, leave it at that. That's a fact. Nah, that's a fact. Um, I I'll say this because I'm not big on the vaccine. I have not taken it. Um, I don't you know, anticipate anyone in my family taking it, though I know um, it may be a requirement before my daughter, my daughter starts school next year. So that's something that, you know, my family and I have to speak about. But um, Cole Beasley's issue on this, and he's right. I, I agree with him. And he's more frustrated because of the restrictions that the NFL is trying to put on players who don't get vaccinated um, in terms of how you're supposed to move around the facility, how you're supposed to operate on your off days. Um, there's even he's really mad at the, the players association because it's like if you haven't been vaccinated, you, you kind of have to sign up to use the, the weight room, whereas if you've been vaccinated, you have access whenever you want. So that's more of his issue with it. But it, he's right, though, because a lot of these leagues are very hypocritical in this stance, you know, like you, you having us travel from state to state, you having us around all these other people that we don't know if they're vaccinated, but then you want to put certain guidelines and restrictions on us and how we supposed to live our life. So I com I completely understand where he's coming from, but to Mike's point, you know, to each his own, man. If, if you want to take it, go ahead. If you don't, don't. I just think that the league should be a little more lenient and understanding that you can't try to control players' day-to-day -day life and then try to kind of push them in that direction of getting a vaccine if that's not what they really want. Yeah. Now, I will say this, though. Travel would definitely, if I was on the fence still about the vaccine, traveling out of the country would definitely push me on the I better get vaccinated side and, and it's more so because I don't trust the 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 the, the medical systems and all these depending on where you where you're going. Everybody not might be as good as the United States is. And and again, we were were probably hit crazy off guard with the virus. Fortunately, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and again, we lost a lot of lives because of COVID. But fortunately, the United States is equipped to deal with the with the with a lot of things, depending on where you go. They might not have that same type of medical structure where you can get the type of help you need if if you wind up somewhere around the world and you get sick because because of COVID. So that would definitely push me over the over the top to, to get the vaccine if I was leaving the United States for for whatever reason. Um, but this is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real fans, real talk.
we as real as you thought. Real 